that point. Ooh, that's hot. Please stand and worship with us.
mesma saia Nem a bovó Nem Blessed Redeemer Emmanuel The rescue for sin His body the bread, His blood the wine, broken and poured out, all for love. The whole earth trembled, and the veil was torn, love so Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, oh, Jesus Messiah, Lord. Name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sin. Well, some people think you're distant, just some words on a page. That you're nothing more than fables handed down along the way. But I've seen you part the waters when nothing else could pull me from the deep. That's who you are to me. Some people think you just live in cathedrals made of stone. Home. And I've seen you in a sunset In the eyes of a stranger on the street It's who you are to me You're amazing, faithful Love's open door When I think to you fill me With hunger for more Of your mercy, your goodness 
I'm sure everybody does And I wonder when I stumble Am I still worthy of your love? Great to be back with you guys. Had a good little vacation. As you can see, my son, my tan on the beach. I think it's just incredible how God knows what we need before we even ask him. Amen. But he wants us to ask him. He needs us to ask him. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your praise. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way Cause he hung up on that cross Then he rose up from that grave My God still rolling stones away There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet we shout out of your parade. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out of your parade. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. 
now we're on and free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise we were the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners now we're on and free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet we shout out of your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our god is surely in this place and we won't be quiet we shout out of your praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet we shout out of your praise there's joy in the house of the lord our god is surely in this place and we won't be quiet we shout out of your praise We shout out your praise. Amen. Good morning. You know, God doesn't know anyone that he doesn't love. God loves you. Isn't that an amazing thought? That the God of the universe uh, was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about driving somewhere, and how they realized that all of the people they were passing on the road, God knows their thoughts all at the same time. God knows their prayers of each and every person on this planet. God knows all of our hearts, what our dreams are. He knows everything about us, and he cares about you. He loves you. It says, for cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. You know what the word you in Greek translates? You. <laughs> you. I, I care about you. That's what God says. I love you when I died on the cross for you. If you've got your Bibles, open them up this morning to John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Uh, I, I love these verses. Many of you know John 3, 16. Uh, we don't carry it over very much further sometimes, but that verse 17 is so critical here this morning as we take a peek. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have eternal life. And then he says, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, right? I pray God will bless the reading of his word this morning. If you've got your listening guides, you can open those up. If you're online with us this morning, you'll find that listening guide at lifepoint.ws there at the very top of the page. You can just click 
uh, where it says uh, digital listening guide, and it will come up for you the same as it does here for those that are in person this morning. I just don't, I, you know, I want you to know how much God loves you. I want you to know when you walk out of here today that you are loved. When you feel all alone, when you feel like no one cares, when you feel like maybe God's not answering your prayer, I want you to know God loves you. And we can know it without a doubt. There's no, there's no question. Sometimes we don't feel God. Sometimes we don't see God. Sometimes we can't touch uh, God. You know, it's those kind of things. But I want you to know God is more than a feeling, and I want you to know that God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross to save us from our sin, from ourself. I'm a mess, I tell you. I, I, I know it. I know who I am. I know who I really am. God knows who I am, and, and I'm so grateful for that scripture in Romans 5, 8. We'll talk about it in a little bit. God demonstrated his love for us in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. I mean, the Bible says that all are sinners, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't deserve God's grace. I don't deserve God's provision. Uh, I don't deserve to get to stand in front of a group of people this morning and proclaim God's word and get to be his mouthpiece this morning. But I want you to know something. It's not because I deserve it. It's because God decided to give me grace. God decided to give you grace. God decided over from, from the beginning of time, he decided to love you and to have a plan, right? For you and me. If you've got your Bibles, you can open them up to John chapter 8 here in just a second. Uh, but the first thing that I want you to see on your listening guide, if you're filling in the blanks, some of you type A's have to have the blanks this morning. Amen. It's all right. I get it. But if you're filling those in, in the love of Jesus, we find grace and life. And he loves you. This morning, I want you to know you could find grace and life. There was a woman talked about here in John chapter 8, first 11 verses. I want to read it to you. I'm going to give you a ton of scripture today uh, and very little illustrations because I believe the scripture this morning illustrates for us exactly what God is trying to say. Here's what he says in John 8 about a woman that was caught in adultery, in the act of adultery. Jesus, he went to the Mount of Olives and at dawn he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law the, and the Pharisees, they brought a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law of Moses, the law of Moses commands us to stone such a woman. Now what do you say? It says they were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. Can you imagine if you were caught in any sin, whether it was adultery or lying or cheating? Can you imagine if the leaders in the church drug you in front of the guest speaker that was Jesus in that day in their synagogues and said, this person's been caught in this act of doing whatever wrong the law says we should do A, B, or C. What do you say? Can you imagine how terrifying we'd all be if we were drugged in front of the church? Boy, aren't you glad verse 17 is there in John 3, 16 and 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. I mean, Jesus knows who we are in private, but he still, he didn't come to say, oh, Rusty, guess what? I know exactly what you did. I, know, I saw you when you acted this way. I, I heard the thoughts in your mind when you did A, B, and C. No, instead, Jesus comes to forgive us. And when Jesus forgives us, what he really means is I promise I'll never bring it up again. That's amazing. That's amazing grace. That's a amazing love. When we find the center of God's love, we find grace and we find life. Jesus bent down and he started to write on the ground with his finger. Some people say that Jesus might have been writing the sins of the people that were standing there that were accusing this lady. 
When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and he said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin to be the first to throw a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and he wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard, they began to go away one at a time, the oldest ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. And Jesus straightened up and he asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. Boy, God's grace. There was another story I'm reminded of. Maybe you remember him. Zacchaeus, the sinner. Oh, we don't remember him that no way. No, we remember him. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. Climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And then one day, as the Savior passed by, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down for I'm going to your house today. I just basically sang you the scriptures. If you've got your Bibles, Luke chapter 19, 1 through 10, that's what happened. This man named Zacchaeus, he was a chief tax collector, verse 2. He was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was a wee little man, a short man, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was going to come that way. And when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this and they began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest in the house of a sinner. How do we know he's a sinner, man? Everybody knew Zacchaeus was a sinner. Eh, but Zacchaeus was a lot like a lot of us. He didn't want to make it sound as bad as the other people. So here's what he says. Uh, he stood up and he said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And I love this statement. And if I've cheated anyone, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? He was kind of softening. He knew. And all the people knew. And guess what? Bigger than that, Jesus knew. If I've cheated anyone out of anything, I will give, I will give them four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save that which was lost. God's grace is sufficient for you. And man, when you accept God's grace, you have a freedom, you have life, you can begin to really live because now you live in, uh, in, 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 you're living life with Jesus. I mean, the Bible says in John 10.10 10, that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. But Jesus says, I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. Have it abundantly. And that's because we experience freedom. We're no longer attached to the sin. We're no longer enslaved to the sin. We no longer have to follow the sin. But we can follow Jesus and we can have life. You see, it doesn't matter what sin you find yourself in right now or that you've committed in the past. God offers his grace to you and I today that you may find life in him. Doesn't matter homosexuality, doesn't matter fornication, doesn't matter adultery, doesn't matter cheating, lying, stealing, gossiping, murdering, ignoring God or running from God's calling in your life. It's all sin. And in the love of Jesus... We find grace and we find life. Grace, that's God's gift. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Do you see it? Not by works so that no one can boast. Forgiveness is God's act of Grace. What is grace? Grace is forgiveness. It's unmerited forgiveness. It's, it's not asked for. It's not. It is just grace. It's just undiluted grace. 1 John 1 9 says, If we confess our sins, Jesus is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins, and he will purify us from all unrighteousness. In other words, he will wipe it out. He will take it in. The Old Testament says that, oh, your sins may be as red as scarlet. They shall be washed white as snow. Jesus says, I forget them as far as the east is from the west. Forgiveness is God's act of grace. Repentance is us accepting God's grace. Well, that's what he said to Zacchaeus. 
Lord, if I've cheated anybody, Lord, I'm going to give half my possessions to the poor if I've cheated anybody. In other words, God, no longer is money going to rule my life. Do you all see it? No, no longer am I a slave to this, but now I'm going to be a follower of you. And, he, and Jesus sees that repentance, and he says, today salvation has come to this house. See, the reality is we got to receive. We got to accept God's grace. Sure, his love is an undeserved kind of love. Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. Look what it says here to us today. I jumped ahead of you on one of those. There we are. You see, at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were away from God, you know, I, I, people say, well, Jesus died 2,022 years ago, Rusty. How can you say that he died for me, Right? Well, God's different than you and I. He doesn't, he's, not, um, he's not confined by time nor space. He's not defined by it either. The Bible actually says in Revelation that Jesus, that God, he's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. When he sees time, he sees the beginning of time and the end of time all at one time. Wrap your mind around that one. See, his uh, infinite mind is so much bigger than our finite mind. That, that over 2,022 years ago, he knew who you are. He knew how you were going to be born. He knew everything intricately about you. He knew every sin you would ever have in your life. And Jesus went to the cross in this while we were sinners. He died for us. But God demonstrated his own love for us. That while we were sinners, while we were direct enemies of God, he died for us. We don't deserve it. It's an undeserved love. A mother once approached Napoleon, seeking a pardon for her son. The emperor replied that the young man had committed a certain offense twice and justice demanded death. But I don't ask you for justice, she says. I don't ask you for justice, the mother explained. I plead for mercy, but your son does not deserve mercy, Napoleon replied. Sir, the woman cried, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. And mercy is all I ask for. Well then, the emperor said, I have mercy. And he spared the woman's son. You see, the love of God is an undeserved love. I think of Matthew chapter 8, 5 through 10, and then in verse 13, there was a Roman soldier. Talked about here in Matthew chapter 8, verse 5, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he says, my servant lies at home, paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve. I underlined it. You guys will have to go back and underline that for him, okay? I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the words and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go. And he goes. And that one, come. And he comes. I say to my servant, do this. And he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those following him, truly I tell you, I have not found uh, anyone in Israel with such great faith. This guy's a Roman. I haven't found any Jews that have this kind of faith. I don't deserve you to come to my house. Listen, neither one of us deserve God to come into our house. Neither one of us, des- none of us deserve Jesus to come into our life. And this man's recognizing, they say, I'm a sinner. But then Jesus said to the centurion, go. 
Let it be done just as you believed it would. And the Bible says that his servant was healed at that moment. Remember, it's an undeserved kind of love. God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 9, says it like this. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all, for we have already made this charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There's no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their way in the way of peace. They do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those that are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscience of sin. In other words, God gave us the Ten Commandments and then all the other 966 laws that are listed in Leviticus. He gave us all of those things so that we would be conscious and know morally what we're supposed to do right from wrong. That we would know what sin is. That there would be no excuse. But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus. To all who believe there is no difference between Jew or Gentile for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You see, the love of God is an undeserved love. It's the only one we can just accept. We can't earn it. We can't work it out and get it some other, by some other means. We can only receive God's grace and his love by simply accepting it. Number three today, God loves you as a perfect and good father. A perfect and good father. You know, none of us are perfect, are we? I, I was reading an illustration that was going on about the perfect preacher. He's the guy that gets up early in the morning. He said he's about 28 years old and he's got 30 years of experience. Said that he's always at your house when you need him. And he's always at the church when somebody else needs him. That he's just perfect. He's always got the right answers. He always has the perfect scripture on the end of his tongue. But there is no preacher that's perfect. But we do serve a Jesus that is. The Bible said he was tempted in every way, yet he was without sin. 1 John 3, 1, it says this, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. It's an unconditional love, a perfect love, an unfailing love. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. John 15, 13 says, No greater love than this than a man who laid down his life for his friends. He loves us. Psalm chapter 32, verse 10 says this, Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one whose trust is in him. What kind of love? Unfailing. His unfailing. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Those are some great words from God. What a great promise. I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And lo, he says in in Matthew 28, I will be with you even to the very end of the age. Philippians 1, 6 says, He who begins a work in you is faithful and just to complete it until he comes. In other words, he's with us all the way through. Luke chapter 15 speaks of another parable. 
Verse 11, Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided up his property between the two sons. And not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had. And he set off for a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth in wild living. And after he had spent everything there, it was a severe famine in the whole country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. And he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? But here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and I will say to him, father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father and I underlined this one too, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. Man, I don't know about you, but if you're a mom or a dad today and your kids have kind of gone wayward or had an experience where they were kind of learning, we like to call it, I'm going to tell you, I go and stand and watch for days. I have no doubt that this daddy was looking down the road every single day, multiple times a day, just praying and hoping that God would have his son return. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. (laughs) People say that Zachary walks like me. There's a walk hidden there in your family. And I would say that this boy had a walk. I mean, he may not have recognized him. He may have been scruffy. He might have been unshaved and all those kind of things. It just looked totally a mess, right? Whatever your picture of a mess is. And he sees him coming from a long way off and he was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet, bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. And then I underlined it for this son of mine. Let's make no mistake about it. He is not going to be cast out of the family. He's not going to be a servant. He is always going to be his son. Listen, you might have given your life to Jesus some time ago, uh, and, and you feel like you have wandered away, and you don't feel worthy to be God, call God's uh, child anymore. But I want you to know something. Once a child of the king, always a child of the king. And he still loves you. And he's been waiting from afar. And he knows your walk. And he knows exactly who you are. And when he sees you coming from a long way off, he's already making preparation. He already knows that even today may be the day that you say, God, you're right. I'm wrong. I don't know about you, but I had to wave that white flag when I was 15. That white flag of surrender. Say, God, I have made a mess of my life. And if you can make something out of this mess that I've made, Here it is. I surrender. I surrender. For this son of mine was dead. He is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Listen, Jesus is still looking for you with open arms. And he's ready to welcome you home. I'm going to tell you, he doesn't know anyone that he doesn't love. And he loves you. Will you receive and share the Father's love? Will you receive it and then share it? That's the Father's love. I pray you will. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, you can accept him. The Bible makes it pretty plain and simple. If you don't know if you would spend eternity in heaven, you can know without a doubt today. In Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, in other words, you believe he is who he says he is, he says you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and with your mouth that you confess and are saved. 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And today he will say, salvation has come to this house. 
Because this man or woman, too, is a son of Abraham. Lord, I love you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we have to be in your house. God, I thank you for your great love, that your love is for every person. God, I pray that you would draw all men to yourself, that, that they would hear that conviction, that guilty conscience, so to speak, and that they would just say yes today. God, I've made a mess out of my life. But God, I need you. God, if you can make something out of this mess I made, here it is. God, I don't know if you could ever love a person like me. And Jesus says, I love all people. So God, today I pray that each man, woman, boy, and girl in this place, God, if they need to surrender their life, they give it to you. God, if they need to rededicate their life, that they would say, God, I'm sorry, I wandered off. God, today, if you're calling men and women to ministry vocationally, God, I pray that they would answer your call. God, we pray for pastors. We pray for missionaries. We pray for teachers. We pray for song leaders. God, we pray for strong mamas and strong daddies in the home to be Christians and to follow you with everything they got to raise our children up in the way they should go. God, I pray you'd call Christians to the political arena. God, I pray you'd call Christians to our schools and I pray you'd call Christians to be lawyers and Christians to be doctors. And God, I pray that our, our nation would know that you alone are God. So God, I love you and I thank you this day. God, lead us and guide us. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Would you come today? Stand with me if you would. You come as God leads you. I'm here. I want to pray with you today. Come on, friend. When the storm is raging all around me, you are the peace that calms my troubled sea. When the cares of this world darken my day, you are the light that shines and shows me the way. Oh, the beauty of your majesty. On the cross you showed your love to me. Beautiful Lord, awesome and mighty. I'm captured by this love I see. Beautiful Lord. Tender and holy, your mercy brings me to my knees. It's your mercy that has made me free, beautiful Lord. When my sin is all that I can see Your grace remains the shelter that I see And when my weakness is all I can give Your gentle spirit gives me strength again Oh, the beauty of your majesty. On the cross you showed your love for me. Beautiful Lord, awesome and mighty. I'm captured by this love I see. Beautiful Lord, send and holy your mercy brings me to my knees and I am lifted by your love to see it's your mercy that has made me free and I am lifted by your love to see it's your mercy that has made Oh, 
Oh, the beauty of your majesty. On the cross you showed your love to me. Beautiful Lord, awesome and mighty. I'm captured by this love I see. Beautiful Lord, tender and holy, your mercy brings me to my knees. It's your mercy that has made me free. Beautiful Lord. I was instructed not to go with purple. Uh, those taking the offering would come forward. We'll pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, we're, we're so grateful for this time, Lord, to, to spend in your grace and your love, Lord. Just be with each and every one of us as we go through this week, Lord. Bless this offering which we're about to take, Lord, that it might do to serve you further in our community. We just pray that you'll walk with us and guide us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, coming up uh, this Thursday, the Gals of Promise are meeting in uh, Kids, Inc. on Thursday. I believe that's 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, come be with Mary at Boatwright as she leads uh, the ladies and does her thing. We're so grateful for Mary. Um, <clears throat> Connection Point class is... Uh, the 14th of next month. If you've not been in that class, it's a good opportunity to come and see what the church is about, um, what we believe, and, and how we conduct our business. Uh, family camp will be Thursday. That's coming up this Thursday, July 28th. It'll be Thursday through Sunday the 30th. It's gonna be down at the Baptist Ridge Campgrounds in Warsaw. There's directions out by the front door. If you need one, pick one up. Uh, it's, we're, we're joining with this fellowship down there in Warsaw. It's a new place we're going. From what I understand, it's a beautiful place. They've got plenty of nice facilities, and we're just going to partner with them. So come on out to family camp. Uh, St. Mary's Church, the Trinity Baptist Church, we're doing some construction August 12th, 8th through 12th. So if you can help, uh, see Jeff or text him. And the number's there on your listening guide. Uh, if you can attend one day or part of one day or anything, you can do to help us out. And we invite you back next week, and love to see you. What do you got, Jeff? Um, we have got our date for our next Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico trip, September 10th through the 16th. If you're thinking about, wondering about, want to go, you need to be contacting me. We're going to be ordering our plane tickets pretty quickly. Um, if you um, want to come and at 6.30 on Tuesday, we'll have an informational meeting here about it. Um, if you can't make that meeting and you want to go, just make sure you contact me. and My number is right there on the, the little guide. Okay, and I urge you, if you haven't been on one of these mission trips, if you want to feel the love and the grace of God, you go on one of those and you meet those people and it will seriously move your life. Heavenly Father, we're, we're so thankful again for this opportunity to come and worship and, and to serve you, Lord. Just light our, our path and guide us through this next week, Jesus, so we can come back and see you. In your name we pray. Amen.